All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. It is Lucy here, and I have been meaning to make videos. I have all these ideas that I want to do, and then I just like don't get around to it. And um, it's pretty lame. It's a pretty lame excuse. So I thought I would come back with um, kind of a different video from what I've done in a while because I don't normally do collection videos. But if you can uh, tell by the title, it's going to be a MAC eyeshadow collection video. I have been watching a lot of them lately, which is kind of weird because it's kind of like a throwback video. When I first started watching YouTube and even doing YouTube, um, everybody was doing MAC eyeshadow collections, MAC eyeshadow tutorials, and then things kind of changed and there were so many other brands on the market really pushing PR and I think that all the beauty gurus were using other brands. Personally, I'm kind of a MAC girl, always have been, always will be. I've been using MAC since I was probably like 18. I'm a lot older than that now. I used it in college. I even worked for MAC at one point. So even though, you know, as a makeup artist, you get PR and you get discounts to all these brands and it's fabulous. And I do like a lot of brands. MAC is kind of where my heart is. And I love that I can just go into a MAC store or go onto the MAC site and I can find anything, any, anything I want. And I just, I personally love how the eyeshadows perform. Um, they're not the softest, most pigmented, but sometimes the softest, most pigmented eyeshadows are not really what I'm looking for in terms of um, what I'm working with like on a client, because I do a lot of bridal and I do a lot of headshots and things like that. So, um, you know, my area of work is not like, you know, editorial, Instagram, glam, that sort of thing. It's, it's something more wearable and timeless often. So um, I'm just really comfortable with MAC eyeshadows. I love them. I think they're fabulous. Uh, they have changed their formula as far as I know. Um, and I think they are a little more buttery and a little more pigmented than maybe they were like five or 10 years ago. But I still, I love them um, so much. Anyway, so let's get on with the video. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through my MAC palettes um, and the singles, and then I'll go through like the MAC palettes that you can buy or maybe the MAC palettes that I've made. Um, I did declutter, I would say about 50% of my makeup collection, including eyeshadows. Um, I am a little bit of a klutz, so I have lost a lot of shadows along the way. Uh, dropping things, um, opening my kit and maybe something wasn't zipped up and the whole thing fell out onto the kitchen tile floor. Those things have happened and some of those eyeshadows I have replaced because I need them and I love them and I don't want to be without them and some um, maybe I haven't or some eyeshadows I had for a really long time and they got kind of hard or it was like a color that I was like I'm never going to use this. I don't want to keep it. And that's kind of like what my goal was with the decluttering is to just have things that I love, I know, I use, and they're going to be in the rotation. And anything that was like really, really out there that I was never going to use in what I do makeup wise, either for myself or for my job, I just either gave it away or I tossed it. So um, this is kind of what I have left, what I use, what I love. And some of these shadows are kind of new and some I've had for a while and they might be chipped and they might be battered, but they have served me well. So I wanted to share them with you today. So let's get on. That was like a really long intro. Um, so I'm going to open up. This is kind of what I'm working with right now. Just as like my kind of every day, I'm kind of playing with these. And these are colors that I've put together for a reason. Um, different people will kind of like category their uh, colors in different ways. I do it in sort of like like what logically I would want to use together and I like to have a mixture of satins and shimmers and mattes and things of that nature. So I'm going to start at the bottom left and I'm just going to go up. So first we have here is Swiss chocolate. I'm just going to double check that. Swiss chocolate is like a really nice um, warm brown. Yes, that is Swiss chocolate. Um, one thing that I'm going to say is that I'm not going to swatch these. Um, and the reason I don't like swatching my eyeshadows, I might be the only makeup artist on the planet or the only person on YouTube. Um, sticking your finger in your eyeshadow, um, I think is kind of gross. Even if it's a clean finger, your fingers contain oils and they get into the shadow and they can start to break it down. And also a finger swatch on your arm or the back of your hand or whatever the case may be, it doesn't necessarily give you a true story of what the color is gonna look like when you pick it up with a brush and you blend it into your eye. 
So I'm just gonna show you them in the pan and then um, my suggestion is that if you see something that you think you might like, I would go try it on at the store or you can also look at like some Google image swatches and you can get an idea that way. Also, I'm very fair. You might be watching this and you might be my skin tone or you might be much darker and depending on your skin type and texture and the color of your skin, these colors can look very, very different and be used for very different things. But yeah, back to the swatches, I just, when somebody sticks their finger, like oh, my biggest pet peeve is when somebody is like looking at my kit, maybe they're on a job with me and it's usually not a makeup artist and they stick their finger in my eyeshadow to swatch it. It's like, it's like somebody coming up and like sticking their finger in your sandwich. Like you'd be like, why are you doing that? I just, I don't know, for me it's kind of weird. I'm gonna stop there so you don't think I'm totally weird. Anyway, so we've got Swiss chocolate, we have smut, which I heard was developed for Kate Moss. It's like a gray, sort of satiny, kind of blacky brown. Love this. I don't use a lot of black um, on myself personally because it's just like too harsh. So I will use this um, if I want to go cool toned and dark. And then I have Carbon. I've had like many of these and I think I ended up throwing them all away except for one because I don't use a lot of black. I'll use like a super dark brown, um, like this one over here, or I'll use like this kind of like blacky brown, but like a straight up black is not something that I use on myself or my clients very much. Um, then we have this color called Texture. This is a wonderful crease color for light, medium uh, skin tones. It goes in the crease so nicely. There's like a little bit of shimmer to it, but not enough to like build up texture. Almost makes it a little light reflective, reflective and a little more forgiving. So I love that for the crease. This one is, let me just double check. This one is like what Jaclyn Hill calls like baby diarrhea and um, uninterrupted, that's what it is. And it came in one of those um, times nine palettes, which I will show you in this video. Um, but I thought this is such a great like camel kind of like yellowy pukey brown that I was like, this would be really great to have. And then I have copper plate, which is like a brownie, but more kind of like cool gray with like a brown undertone. This is excellent for eyebrows. If you're like me and your eyebrows are really ashy naturally, if you put like a regular brown, it's gonna look really red. This works fantastic. Um, it also is great on the lower lash line if you want a little shadow, but you don't wanna look like you have like a black line on your lower lash line. I like that. Um, the next here, I believe this is Wedge. I'm gonna double check. Yes, this is Wedge. A really nice cooler toned, it's actually, it's kind of like neutral crease color for fair skin. This also can work as a brow color. Um, I would say more for like blondes and even strawberry blondes. Then we have here Soba, which is a shimmery, kind of like beigey color. Not too shimmery, like a nylon. Um, if you're familiar with nylon, you know what I mean. It's like very, very shimmery. It's just a little bit of like a, like a fluffy shimmer, if that makes sense. Um, most of my clients are, you know, like 40 plus or at least like 35 plus. So I'm not using those super, super shimmery colors. And um, for events, sometimes I will, but I feel like mattes and more like satins are kind of like what I gravitate towards. This one, you wouldn't think how amazing it is, but this one is called Orb. And this one I discovered when I was shopping for makeup. Um, it's almost like a translucent matte color. It's great for a brow bone highlight, and it's also really nice as a base shade. Um, after you've primed with like concealer or like an actual eyeshadow primer, you just kind of set it with this, and it's got this beautiful, almost like translucence to it, but your shadows, no matter what color you, you use, will blend really nicely. Um, next down here we have, I wanna say it's Mylar, but I wanna double check. This one, yes, this one I kind of use interchangeably with blank type, um, which is not a color that I have anymore because it's smashed. Um, but this one is great for fair skin, very, very fair skin highlight um, without shimmer. And then here I have Twinks. Let me just double check some of these colors. I'm like, just, I think that's Twinks. Yes, this is Twinks. I actually have a couple of these. I think I might even have like two or three of these because sometimes they'll come in a set or I'll have so many colors. I forgot I had it and I'm like, wait a second. So I'll end up with a couple. Um, next up here we have, I'm gonna double check. I believe this is tempting. No, this is woodwinked, my bad, woodwinked. That's another one. This one is really interesting. It's it's a goldy brown, but it's not too yellow. It's more like taupey gold brown, if that makes sense. And when you put it on your lid and then you blend it out, it sort of takes on another hue. So. 
My point is if you blend it in, which is sort of like a goldy brown, but not too gold. Like if you're like me and you have sort of like pinky undertones and you put like amber lights on, for example, it's sometimes a little too gold, if you know what I mean. This one has a little bit of gold, but it's, it's also kind of satiny and brown. So it gives you that idea of gold without being too much on fair skins. I hope that makes sense. Now this one, I don't know the name. It came in one of those like girls palettes, the personality palettes. And I believe it was, this one came in the Pretty Princess and I don't remember the name or I don't even know if it had a name to be honest, but it is this dark matte brown. It is so dark, it's almost black, but it's great if you wanna be so dark brown but you don't wanna to commit to like a cool black, it is fantastic for that. Then down here, Expensive Pink. It is like this Cosmo, it's like if you drank a Cosmopolitan and you wanted that color on your eyeshadow, like that would, that would be the color. It's sort of like a goldy pinky color and it's really pretty. I'm kind of into these colors for summer, which is why I have it in here. Um, I might move it out when summer's over and I change my kind of color story. So here we have Creme Brulee, which is great if you're very fair um, in the crease. Um, it also works to like blend out if you've done a dark outer V or like a dark crease and you kind of want to soften it a little bit, it works great for correcting. Um, and if you're like light to medium, it's great as just your all over uh, lid shade. So those are kind of like my main jams right now and I'm really enjoying these, but I'm going to show you a few more that I'm also using right now.